All right, uh, here we go. HG Locks, how are you doing today, bro? Man, everything is good, man. I'm blessed up, man. Can't complain, dog. What's up with you, man? True, true. I mean, with your projects so far, like uh, Diamond in the Rough, that was like stellar, like EP, and then handle handle that, like it got like a lot of views, like as explained before, and like even the music video was pretty fly from there, mm. you know. No, nah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. We just getting warmed up, man. Like for real, man. I'm gonna get in in, in in depth with everything a little later on, but you know what I mean for sure. I appreciate that, man. It's a pleasure for having me on your platform, dog. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So let's just get it started off right now, you know. So uh, growing up in the BX, uh, was there, like, ever, like, any inspiration from there that made you want to pursue more in the music scene? I wouldn't necessarily say the Bronx, but just, like, New York City itself, you know what I mean? Growing Like, I grew up in that early 2000 era, you know what I mean? Um, that Rockefeller, that Dipset, you know what I mean? That, um that G unit era, you know what I mean? So yeah. it wasn't just, I wouldn't just necessarily hold it just to the Bronx, but just that New York City era in general, it was, it's a big influence on who I am today as a person, you know what I mean? And just seeing, seeing that, like as a youngster, I'm like, nah, I want to get into this. You know what I mean? This shit is dope, like, word up. True, true, yo. I mean, even with the BX too, like I know like New York, it was like fly with all these other artists coming by. But the BX had yeah. like some cold artists, you know, like Fat Joe, Remy Ma. Of uh, course. Well, of course. So, Shia. Yeah, Abby, Corey Guns. Corey Guns too. And then A Boogie, uh, Don yeah. Q, you. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, bro. Not gonna yeah, lie. Man, Dream Dog, Jet Gang Zay. Yeah. Bugs. It goes on, Swave. It goes on. We working, you know what I mean? True, working. True. My guy Diz, he from the Bronx. He the big, big, big producer in the town. You know what I'm saying? We working, man. I love it. Like we all come from the same, like cloth. You know what I mean? Just grinding, uh, from the for years together. You know what I mean? So just to see the fruitions, everything, just starting to you know come to life. It's dope. For yeah, real. for sure, for sure. And uh, growing up, um, what was like your musical history and background like, and what inspired you to become like a rapper and musician? Well, like growing up, you know, music, um, the varieties were different. Like, you know, messing around with my aunt a lot. She was in the reggae, soca a lot, you know what I mean? Uh, my pops was really in the like Motown and everything. So, you know, I just like, the range was just so wide and variety, like just different of music, you know what I mean? So I just learned to appreciate music itself, you know what I mean, in a, as in a whole. And as I got older, I mean, well, not even, even as I got older, because I always, messed around with you know the hip-hop since I was about 13 14 but like just like with me and my boys a couple of my boys we started early you know just you know early mixtapes just rapping on instrumentals so it was always something I you know used to mess around with but then as I got older I decided to really lock in and take it serious you know what I mean yeah yeah I know what you mean and you know like even with the music like I know that you explained like more about how you started with your group like you worked with like hunted gang and like how you came yeah. as like an artist so um tell me more about like the big history of like hunted gang how like how it was formed and like everything that the group has managed to accomplish so far and what was like the inspiration uh, beyond that group oh uh, man you know um hunted gang man we've been it's a few of us you know um shout out dive man shout out Veli, man Mike G, Patty Pat, you know what I mean? There's a couple of us, you know, we've been doing this for a while, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it started off as just like a little, you know, a little street team, you know, throwing parties and everything. And as time just went on and just expanded, you know, we really decided that we were going to lock in and take it, you know, the music seriously. And we knew what we were capable of as a unit, you know what I mean? So we locked in and, and put our focus into it and then really just, you know, started grinding, you know, um, everybody has different personalities, you know, and that's what makes a group so, you know, potent, you know what I mean? Because we all play different positions. So we made sure that everybody's personalities fit into the best ways that it could and try to capitalize and prosper as much as we could, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think in the entire project of Offended Gang, uh, Fetty Wap was in, like, one of the songs that you, you were in, so... um. Yeah, and then you've managed to work with man. him and like you know even be on tour from for a bit so 
tell me uh, yeah, more not? about you know working with like how you managed to work with like zoo and like what was working and touring with mike oh. and did he give you like any advice on like how to strive in the industry yeah man shit well working with zoo is different bro you know that's family you know what i mean so like even the relationship that we got is so much deeper than music you get what i mean like we we linked up early on like when trap queen was still bubbling yeah. before like before bro even had dreads and everything you know what i mean like that's when we linked up so you know the relationship was as genuine as could be you know what i mean so just to watch him become like from there to become a a mega star like you know what i'm saying it was just crazy but bro was humble through it all he never changed you know what i mean and that's what i love and respect the most from him you know what i mean and the biggest thing i i can say that i gained from him is just just how to just react in these rooms for the people you know what i mean like and to just man you you know what i mean you got to stay humble through it all no matter how, how high, how low, you know what I mean? You gotta stay humble through it. And why, man, he blessed me, man. He gave me opportunity even to go on tour, you know what I mean? That's something that you don't gotta do, you know what I mean? For real, for real. And I'm I'm always gonna be grateful for that. Bro, bro, bro put me in positions to display my talent, you know what I mean? And that's all you can ask for as an artist, you know what I mean? It positions and opportunity to do what you gotta do, you know what I mean? And the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And, like, that whole Patterson, like, BX link up, like, that was, like, pretty strong back then, too. Because, like, even, mm -hmm. um, you know, Fetty, he was working with, like, Don Q, like, Monte, like, with A Boogie and, like, Don Q, too. Yeah. So I noticed, like, that trend was, like, strong, like, from the jump, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, man, it's genuine. Like I said, man, that's a genuine dude, man. I'm always, I'm always be grateful for bro, you know what I mean? True, true. So, yo, um, so speaking about, like, your project that you dropped last year, you know, Diamonds in the Rough, tell me about yeah. that whole creative process for that project and what inspired you to make it so far. Well, I'm going to keep it real with you, When I decided to make Diamond in the Rough, I wasn't in the best spot that I was in. I was at one of my lows in my career, you get what I mean? So, uh -huh. with that, I just wanted to get back into having fun and making things like excited for myself. I got caught up, I'm not gonna lie, I got caught up in the whole industry, just everything, you know, everything was moving fast. It was just, things were just happening. I had to get back to my roots with it. And that's why I said dominant in the rough, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I feel like we all have that potential in us. You just gotta sharpen it up, you know what I mean? And grind, you know what I mean? That's why that's dominant in the rough, you know, you gotta shine, you know what I mean? You just gotta take a little polish, that's all. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And it was actually like a very like interesting uh, project, even though it kind of had like more of like an EP type style. Like the project yeah. was still dope, like the beats were banging. And like even at a time like during the pandemic, I, fi I think it was like released last year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. In the beginning so, of the yeah, yep. I mean, and in January. Yeah, it was kind of like um, a good creative process to start from there and, you know, to get things like booming in that sense either way, you know? Yeah, that project definitely helped me through the pandemic. You know what I mean? Like it was um, I had a record wristband on the radio. You know what I mean? I had Diamond in the Rough on the radio. Um, yeah, we had a few of those records on the radio, at least three of them. You know what I mean? So, and the videos themselves were doing great on YouTube and that's forward. You know, so it was that project was great. You know, it was a great. I just wanted people just to understand that I was just getting back to my roots and I had to. That was that was my gift to the people to let them know I'm my bad I'm back you know what I'm saying we gonna get back to having yeah. fun with it you know what I mean yeah. no doubt no doubt and yo you know with New York right now it's been crazy with this whole like drill scene you know everyone making yeah. like drill yeah. songs you know Pop Smoke uh, Favi Chef G Sleepy Hollow uh, yeah, it's all fire all all fire. these other artists so oh, how do you feel about that scene so far and have you ever thought about like making like a drill song like in the future or like in the meantime? Yeah, man, I love it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm somebody that actually watched the beginning of drill music itself. You know what I mean? Like drill music itself before it even. So the fact that New York, we have our own style of drill, that, that shit is mad fire, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's fire because that sound is actually pushing the culture globally right now like new york drill you know what i mean it's crazy so i'm here for it i love it man you know i'm, I'm here for it and as far as um me making drill songs 
yeah, I got a few. You know what I mean? They're not out yet. You know what I mean? I got them a few. Like I got one that's coming up on my um, upcoming project. I'll speak more about that a little later on and everything. And um, yeah, I got a few drill records. You know what I mean? I'm here for it. You know, like I love it. Like I said, I love it. I love the energy of it. So you know, I like I said, it's not necessarily something that I'm going to be doing all the time, but I'm definitely got a few, and I'm definitely you know, I'm I love it. I love it. No doubt, no doubt. And yo, with uh, BX right now, it's, you know, popping right now, you know, with TJ, Cardi B, Dream Doll, like Ron Suno, and like their mm-hmm. music's like getting out of here and all that. So how do you feel about like the new talent that's coming out of uh, the BX so far? It's fire, man. Like I said, I love the direction of the city in general, but especially me being from the Bronx, I extra, I'm, I extra love it. Like Dream Doll, she got potential to really like, really be that next thing from New York as a female. And I love that. And then as far as, like, you know, um, Ron Suno, et cetera, like, yo, they the energy, the energy that they bring in is just, it's dope. It's music is about feeling good. You know what I mean? It's about feeling a vibe. So the fact that you could turn up, you know what I mean? Enjoy yourself to these type of, like, you know, these type of vibes, that's what it's about. That's what music should be. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm here for it. I love it, bro. No doubt, no doubt. And, you know, although you've worked with, you know, Billionaire, like, Black in the past, you've also linked mm-hmm. up with the late FBG Duck, you know, rest in peace uh, back then with, like, one mm-hmm. track of his. So tell me more on, yeah, like, man, how you that's family, man. Yeah. <laughs> and what was, like, working with uh, FBG Duck uh, like, you know? Damn, man. Duck, man, that's not... Ah, man. That was, those are my guys. Like, that. that's another relationship I got that's like so much deeper than rap. You know what I mean? Like forget rap. These dudes done slept slept in the crib with me. You know what I'm saying? We done like bonded for real. Then went paintball shooting. Like those are like those are that's my friend. Like you know what I'm saying? Like forget music dog. So that shit hurt man when I heard that about Duck. You know what I'm saying? Like that really hurt. You know what I mean? Duck is my guy, man. I he was special too man. Duck is a different type of talent, you know? So that whole situation is unfortunate, but at the end of the day, the reality is they know they know the life they was living. They know, you know, this is real life conversations we had. Like you understand the life they live in and what's going on. So yeah. it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like though it's hard to speak about because it's just like damn, those are really my people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like black, I tell them all the time, man. I just appreciate him just staying alive, man. And that's and they don't get no realer than that. You feel me? Like just to stay alive, dog. You know, what I mean, I, I genuinely care about you, man. So, you know, they know that, though. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And, you know, like, with me, like, when I heard about him passing away, it was, like, a crazy feeling because of all the stuff, like, going on in, like, Chicago, you know. Now, like, you see, like, more voices, like his mom, you know. She's been speaking uh-huh. more about that lately. Uh, the other side, you, you know, like, who I mean, right? Like, they're... Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's been getting, like, kind of interesting for a bit, too. But I hope in that sense, too, like, maybe vi- the violence and everything else could be resolved soon at, like, one point and all that. So, yeah. Nah, 100%, man. You know, it's too much money out here to be beefing, man. You can't get money and be beefing at the same time. It just don't mix. You know what I'm saying? Too much money out here to get. Yeah, I know what you mean. So uh, back then, um, one thing that I found out about you was from – you know, your DJ Vlad interview and like you guys mm-hmm. talked about your story and like a wide variety of like other questions. Uh, you know, with the rumor of, you know, Vlad presenting these interrogation like interviews and questions, um, you know, even yeah. with rumors about the whole Casanova thing and everything else. How did you feel about the rumors yeah. of Vlad supposedly getting rappers locked up? And how was that interview like when you were with him, like in general and afterwards? This is my honest opinion about it. And this is this is the truth. And this goes for whatever platform you are or going in front of you. They can own like it's their duty and job to fish or, you know, what I mean, throw the bait out there. You get what I'm saying? You can't be mad at a fisherman for fishing. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's up to you. How you respond and react to those. You get what I mean? And so that's the reality. Like. Yeah, do some of these questions be too thorough or be extra? Yeah, they do. But are you really going to go that hard for some likes or for them views to really go all out? Or are you yeah. going to 
just conduct yourself in a manner where you know how to conduct yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, because people not stupid, man. People know how to read the room and understand what's going on. You know, it's up to you. You got the power. You don't have to answer wildly. If you do, that's on you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the guys, that's the honest truth. Yeah. I think with me, like well, I got into like Vlad Pro a bit, and you know, I kind of like the way you know, how he asked, you know, certain questions about music and that whole, like, uh, childhood and, like, you know, like, the industry. But when it gets into, like, these criminal-like questions, it kind of, like, just moves away from the purpose of what the interview is actually for, to promote the music, to promote, like, how they mm-hmm. made the music and all that. So I feel like in some cases, too, like, one way to improve it is maybe, like, have more of a balance towards the music than, like, anything else, like, the street stuff, like that doesn't really matter and all that. So Yeah, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. But at the same time, you know what these young kids want to click on or just it's just the reality of where the culture is at. It's clickbait. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna click on something that you see headlining such and such talks about stabbing or punching this, then you are such and such just released his new album. You get what I'm saying? It's just the reality of it. You know what I mean? It's it, it's whack, but I get you though. I yeah, do. No doubt. I I just only have like these like three questions left. Uh, but like they're kind of short. So um, how do you feel about uh Bobby uh heading home, like coming back home, and you know just him being like celebrated after you know spending like seven years in that point, Jen, in that point, you know? Yo, it don't get no better than that, man. Bobby just yo, so I like. You gotta understand when the, around the time Bobby Schmurder and then like came out, that's around the time when I was really getting like my grind on too. You know what I'm saying? So just to see the appreciation that a real one should get after staying solid through through it all. You know what I'm saying? They deserve everything that's coming towards them, man, because they had a different energy of the city. You know what I mean? You want to talk about like that wasn't even drill rap. But it was the basis of what New York drill is now, if you want to be for real. But it wasn't drill. It's just them. They just being authentic in themselves. And I love it. I tell everybody, just be yourself, man. You know what I mean? Be yourself. Because trying to be somebody else is way too hard, dog. You know what I mean? Be you. And that's what I love about them. Them dudes is they selves. The, t- the city going to turn up, man. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. And... um in the future, who would you like to, like, work with someday in terms of, like, music and such? Uh, I definitely want to um, work with Meek Mill, man. That's one of my people. That's one of, like, the people that I definitely want to work with. You know who I am who I really like now? I'm a new artist, man. I, I like Pooh Shiesty, man. I like that cat, man. I, I, I want to I do a song with Pooh Shiesty, too, man. Um, he's dope. Yeah, Shiesty you is, know like, too I mean? dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, who else, man? I wanna, I wanna get, I wanna work with a few pop artists too, man, because I know I could get into that lane, you know. So definitely, we wanna expand as much as we could. I'm all about expansion and versatility, dog. You know what I mean? That's all I'm about. No doubt, no doubt. And yo, um, so for the final question, uh, what are your plans uh for this year in terms of like any music or any other creative projects and so forth? And uh, yo, do you have any like final words you would like to say for any creative or any person like pursuing the dreams? Nah, no doubt. Um, I actually got my project finished right now. It's in the process of getting mixed. I got a new project by the drop called Locked and Reloaded, and it's crazy. I got fifteen bangers on there. You know what I mean? It's gonna it's probably going to, what is this, March 1st? It'll probably drop by the end of this month. You know what I mean? So we're going to go crazy. I got that. I got new visuals on the way. I'm also filming two new shows. I've actually started acting as well. So I'm filming two new shows. Um, one's going to be on Hulu. Another one's on YouTube. And I'm actually about to start filming a third one as well out in California and starting in May. So, you know, just balancing the music and the acting, you know, it's just been... A lot on my plate, but I love it though, because I never, I never like even thought that I would enjoy acting like how I am, you know. And it's dope, you know. That's a that's a newfound talent I didn't know that I had. So yeah. now I'm getting, I'm really starting to like get into that and embracing that. And for as far as words of encouragement for anybody out there that's just like grinding, man, just keep going, man. You know, it's a process. Like it's literally a process, dog. Like, like I like I heard Nipsey say it. 
I don't probably felt every emo possible emotion that you could like ever feel going through this. You know what I mean? And that's reality. I get what he was saying now because there's highs, there's lows. There's times you confuse. There's times you want to give up. There's times you like, yo, I'm I'm out of here right now. Like you know what I mean? You just got to be able to balance the highs and the lows. And your story is your story. It's your journey. Your journey is going to be different than somebody else's. Embrace it. You feel me? Just embrace your journey. Yeah. It struggles and all. It's all a part of the story, man. Word. No doubt. No doubt.